I'm with Fidel Lim and Gary Camello, the co-authors of When a Patient Refuses a Nurse Assignment. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. What was your original inspiration for writing this article? I think it's a very timely topic, especially with all the social discourse that's going on in our communities and also the level of burnout that our nurses are experiencing across the country because of the pandemic. Our nurses are emotionally drained and these type of situations can be a real gut punch to someone. No one wants to feel rejected, especially for something completely out of their control. Uh, like the fact that they identify as a male or a female or happen to be from a background different than the patient. I think it's nursing's dirty little secret that we've brushed aside and been complacent with um, as a profession. I read an article in the New York Times. Um, the title of the article is captivated my mind was when the patient is racist. And the article essentially uh, discussed what is it that we have to do to deal with scenarios wherein a staff member is the object of bias, uh, racial prejudice, and so on. So that's the, the inspiration of, uh, for us having to write this article. When you address a patient refusal, what is the organization's first priority? Patient safety is always the priority. As nurses, we, we know patients are at the center of everything. Uh, but also, simultaneously, our concern should be on the nurse to ensure they feel supported. Nurses are really good at taking care of other people and not worrying about their own health. A nurse who doesn't feel supported isn't going to have a positive viewpoint on the culture of safety on their unit, and they are not going to feel that they have a healthy work environment. I think the literature has shown us that. How should a nurse leader balance their obligation to both patient and nurse? It's incumbent upon the nurse leader to you know, step back and say, yeah, my nurses are good clinicians. They could, you know, take vital signs. They can do critical thinking with what's happening with the patient from a uh, medical surgical perspective. But are they trained that they have the skill set to deal with difficult conversation that uh, will follow along when scenarios such as patient refusal of a, an assignment because of their um, prejudice and um, bias. So that's a hard balance to, uh, to, to, um, to look at, but I think not impossible to address. Gary, can you briefly explain your algorithm for patient refusal? Uh, for example, let's say we have a female Jewish Orthodox patient. Uh, who doesn't want a nurse who identifies as a male. We'd follow the steps with the patient and nurse. Uh, again, I stress the fact that I'm here to support, uh, making sure the nurse is right there with me, thinking out each step and is in agreement with the plan. From your experience in education, do you think there's room in the curriculum to teach this subject matter? I don't expect there will be a three credit nursing course on this topic about patient refusal, but I do think there is a, a room to weave it in uh, in the nursing education. So, for example, uh, giving them simulation exercises, case studies, uh, providing real-time clinical experiences in caring for challenging patients and how to develop de-escalation skills. So that can be weaved in. Uh, we don't have to set it apart like a separate course.